this example, we're going to we're going to see an improper integral of type one again. So one of our limits is going to be infinite, but we're going to use L'Hopital's rule here. So this integral. First thing we do with an improper integral is what? Write it as a limit. So we're going to write it as a limit. I'm going to choose a different variable here just so we don't get stuck doing the same thing every time. So I'm going to use k. I'm going to allow k to approach infinity and take the integral from 1 to k. Now, any ideas how we could evaluate this integral? If we were going to take the derivative of this, what derivative rule would we have to use? We would have to use the product rule, right? You guys agree with that? A lot of times when we would use the product rule for something like this, then to take the antiderivative, we're going to have to use integration by parts. You guys remember that? In this example here, if we let u equal x and dv equal e to the negative x dx, that's going to satisfy what we want here. Our, our u is going to get simpler when we take the derivative. Our dv is going to not get more complicated when we take the integral. So I'm going to, I'm going to just go off to the side, and I'm going to evaluate that definite integral. And then I'm going to come back to this, this line up here. So I'm just going to take this down and copy it down here, and let's, let's evaluate that. So we're going to use integration by parts. If u equals x, then what does du equal? Yes. And what is, if dv equals e to the negative x, what does v equal? Negative e to the negative. negative x, yes. So then our integration by parts formula tells us that this integral here, the antiderivative of this is going to be u times v minus the integral of v du. And I'm going to write this with the limits here um, so that I don't have to worry about my notation. So we're going to evaluate this part from 1 to k and then we have to still evaluate this definite integral. Um, what is the integral of e to the negative x? Or the antiderivative of e to the negative x? You guys just did it, or at least Vimmel just did it. So we end up with and I kind of skipped over a step here again. I factored out the e to the negative x here and the e to the negative x that I would get here. So we have negative e to the negative x times x plus 1 evaluated from 1 to k. Again, if, if, if you need to work that out, watch the video, pause it when you get here, and, and see if you can figure out how you get there. Um, then we plug in k and 1, and when you do that, you end up with that that expression right there. So what does this tell me? What does this give me here? I evaluated this definite integral and got this. So how does that apply to this problem? So this expression right here is equal to what we have in the red brackets here. So what we want to do is evaluate the limit as k approaches infinity of this. So that's going to look like this. And I put the brackets around this because I've, I've been harping on notation here all year. Um, but I'm going to say that these brackets are not necessary. Can anybody tell me why these brackets are not necessary? This term right here is a constant. It doesn't depend on k. So whether k approaches infinity or negative infinity or something in between, this 2 over e is not going to change. So we don't need these brackets here. Uh, because that 2 over e is a constant, so really it's just this term that we need to allow k to approach infinity. So we rewrite it. We're going to take the limit as k approaches infinity. I distributed this negative here to the k and the 1, so we got negative k minus 1, and I moved the e to the negative k to the denominator. Now look at this limit here carefully, and what happens as k approaches infinity? What do we get on top? Negative infinity. And what do we get on the bottom? Positive infinity. So if we get negative infinity over infinity, that is an indeterminate form, which means we can use L'Hopital's rule. So using L'Hopital's rule, we rewrite the limit. We take the derivative of the top and the bottom, and we get this. 
Can we evaluate this limit now? As k approaches infinity, what does e to the k do? It goes to infinity. What's negative 1 divided by infinity? Zero, right? So we get 0 plus 2 over e, which is 2 over e.